Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, dear brothers and sisters from all around the world, to a new episode of Signs of Prophethood. This is your host, Omar Khalid. Today, we're going to talk about a very interesting topic. It's about the generosity and the simple life of the Prophet as a sign that he's a Prophet sent by Allah to all nations. And we're going to talk also about the generosity in the message of Islam, in the Quran, in the life of the Prophet, and so on and so forth. Before this, we would like to welcome Sheikh Ibrahim Zidane. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Ibrahim. Alaikum salam. I'm very happy to see you again, Sheikh pleasure. Ibrahim. And Alaykum. it's very interesting. B this topic <coughs> answers some of the uh, misconceptions and sometimes the attacks on the Prophet Muhammad sallam, that they say that he didn't want, God forbid, to, to actually do this for Allah and is not sent by Allah. This message is just for gaining wealth and gaining superiority and because he wanted to like um, gain maybe um, king, he wants to be a king or something like this. So we'd like to answer this. Was this really the life of the Prophet? Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa salam wa The enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala since the time of Adam alayhi salam, they would just say things. Mm -hmm. and that's why the Quran is full of verses that says وَقَالُوا وَقَالُوا and they said and they said and unfortunately the foolish ones and those who do not uh, really uh, go to the truth of the matters and they, they just might blind follow them. Mm -hmm. uh, the Prophet والسلام, as we heard before and this is a fact there's no Prophet of Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved everything about his life more than the Prophet Every single detail of his life is saved for people to see. And one of which is, whether it's private or public or in whatever situation, whatever relationships, mm -hmm. we have all of this. Mm -hmm. And the subject of ascetism or zuhd uh, with the generosity of the Prophet ﷺ, and they go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. The Prophet ﷺ was in charge of the Ummah. He's a Prophet of Allah. Mm -hmm. But he was, uh, and he would always stress this fact, mm -hmm. that he was given the choice whether to be a king mm -hmm. and a messenger, like Dawood salam, David salam, or to be a slave of Allah and a messenger of Allah. And he chose to be a slave of Allah and a messenger of Allah. Mm -hmm. And he would say, I eat like a slave eats, sitting on the floor, and he eats. And he does not even recline, when uh, he said this in the context of eating and reclining, he does not do that because this is the way of those who are arrogant or the kings and so on. Mm -hmm his actions was the actions of the, the, the most simple people on the face of earth. That when someone would enter the masjid, for example, or the gathering, and there are the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, and the Prophet ﷺ is sitting with them, he would not be able to differentiate mm -hmm. who is the messenger of Allah, who is the leader, and who are the, the, his companions. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he's sitting with them, uh, nothing special mm -hmm. in whatever he's wearing, whatever his position is, and so on. If we go on with this, how uh, his way of living, والسلام, that he would sleep on a, a straw mat, mm -hmm. that when he wake up والسلام, with, with marks on his body, when people would see these marks, rough uh, thing that he would sleep on, والسلام, and month after month after month, for three months, as Aisha, عنها, she said, and there's not even fire is lit in the houses of the Prophet, والسلام, not just in one, all of the houses of the Prophet, no cooked food whatsoever. And when she was asked, uh, عنه, so how did you used to eat? And that was asked by her uh, nephew, Zubair ibn Awam, Abdullah ibn Zubair. And she said, Al -aswadan, that we would live by the two blacks, which is the water and dates. Mm -hmm. So this is what they, what they would eat. And the Prophet وسلم, would uh, wrap a stone, sometimes two stones, around his stomach because of the extreme hunger. <laughs> that he والسلام, would go through. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose <laughs> for his Prophet وسلم, the best way of life and one of which is to show the people and he is the example to all mankind <laughs> that his message is not about this world and the beauty of it and the status of it. <laughs> it's about the purpose of this life, calling people to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, seeking the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. <laughs> and they offered him kingdomship, they offered him wealth, and they offered him all kinds of the desires of this world and he refused all of this. He just has a message to convey and he was the best one والسلام, that applied it in his life and his families and so on. And when people see when people are going after wealth or status and so on, uh, maybe if someone is pretending in his public life, mm -hmm. how is he with his family and his uh, wives and so on? Uh, something that is the same 
عليه الصلاة والسلام. And there are many incidences and many stories. It's not incident, but rather the lifestyle, the mm. continuous one, never changed. Maybe, for example, in the beginning in Mecca, mm. a person would say it was tough and difficult. Then in Medina, at the end of the life of the Prophet ﷺ, when the, the treasures would come to the Prophet ﷺ, and basically the Muslims ruled a big portion of the land and so on, and nothing have changed whatsoever <laughs> in the life of the Prophet ﷺ, not even a bit. It a actually, it becomes even more in the status of a zuhd and asceticism. And what did the Prophet ﷺ die? And what did he leave? Mm. What, did, what, what are the inheritors that he left? والسلام, nothing. And uh, this is such a, a serious matter, of course. And uh, it's ignorance that make people sometimes they might say or think these types of things. Mm. If they go back and see what is authentically mentioned about the Prophet ﷺ in his life, there's no one on the face of earth more ascetic than the Prophet Subhanallah. And the generosity of Prophet Muhammad also وسلم, goes hand in hand with this simple life. And we know this actually from the beginning of the Wahy, beginning of the revelation, when he came to Lady Khadija, may Allah be pleased with her. So we would like to, to tell the viewer what happened, what did she tell the Prophet when he was afraid that maybe something is attacking me, something is no. dangerous or something. So she tried to reassure the Prophet by certain words. So we'd like to analyze these yeah. words. Uh, Khadija radiallahu anha, when the Prophet yes. came after the first encounter with the Wahi, with the revelation from Allah, and uh, seeing Jibreel alayhi salam, and we know all the hadith when he uh, embraced the Prophet very tightly and he said, Iqra, and he said, Ma ana biqari, read, I'm not, uh, I cannot read. And then the first verses of the Quran were revealed. Then he went to Khadija radiallahu anha, shivering and mm -hmm. scared. This is something that he did not know before, mm -hmm. as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran. And she, radiallahu uh, anha, and she was a very wise woman, of course, mm -hmm. and she, she knew that this is something that is not going to harm the Prophet sallam. Why? She had evidences mm -hmm. that he won't be harmed. Why? She said to him, because you're kind to the kin and kith, uh, and you carry those who are in need, and you're very generous to the, to the guest. And you help the poor and the destitute, mm -hmm. and you feed them, and so on. So this is was the the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before the revelation came to him. So she took these uh, these actions as an evidence mm -hmm. that there is no way harm would afflict him, which is a great benefit for all of us. That when a person is generous and mm -hmm. a person caring for others and uh, taking care of them, and, and not just financially. Mm -hmm but with one's physical ability and mm -hmm. going after the needs of people and so on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect him from harm. So uh, this is from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the same uh, characteristics were mentioned to Abu Bakr which how Abu Bakr was very close in his behavior and his characteristics to the Prophet And he's the most among the Ummah, the Prophet that followed the ways and the manners and the characteristics of the Prophet mm -hmm. And this was again, as you said before, uh, the wahi revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and of course after the wahi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perfectly applying everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed with these perfect manners that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do. Subhan Alluding to this point, Sheikh Ibrahim, about the generosity of people and when they help the needy and so on, they're going to be protected inshallah by Allah. This I think, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Sheikh Ibrahim, this is a kind of worshipping Allah and asking Him for help like indirectly without saying, Oh Allah, protect me. I can do this by my actions. If I protect people, if I want Allah to help me and to make my, my life easier, I make it simple and easy for others. So we want to allude to this, that the, the worshipping, kind of worshipping, that the message that Prophet Muhammad came with, it's not like we pray and we say, oh Allah, do this and this and this to us and that's it. But we do actions that are related to the attributes of Allah. Uh, no, definitely. The yeah. attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, many of them, mm -hmm. they have uh, the meanings of it uh, the human beings are ordered to have these meanings in their human capacity. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful mm -hmm. and nothing is the like of the mercy of Allah, nobody can even comprehend mm -hmm. the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we are ordered to have mercy mm -hmm. and to show this mercy to others. Mm -hmm. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al uh, wadud for example, the most loving, a person has to show this also to others and so on and so forth. Generosity, mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al karim the most generous. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the believers, part of believing in these names and attributes is to have these uh, characteristics in oneself mm -hmm. according to our capacity as human beings. 
and this is part of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and of course the Prophet <laughs> was the perfect one in, in all of this <laughs> and uh, when the, the, the subject of, of the, these characteristics and it's an act of worship one of the very basic understanding of the deen of Islam that we are not ordered to be uh, only doing things on our own mm -hmm. but rather to extend our benefits to others <laughs> And this is the meaning of generosity, and that's why al-jud, the word al-jud or being generous, is is far more than just giving money to someone. Mm -hmm. And that's why the Prophet والسلام, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated him and perfected him, that all levels of generosity he had reached the perfect status in it. Mm -hmm. Meaning, being generous with one's time. Mm -hmm. This is a form of generosity. A person can be very greedy with his time yes. to use it for his own desire, for gaining money, whatever there is. Mm -hmm. But he would give time out. And this is what people lack nowadays mm -hmm. when uh, because of the greed of, of many of the people, they make them work the entire day. Mm -hmm. So there's no generosity with one's time that a person would give time to volunteer to help someone mm -hmm. uh, to do something. Mm -hmm. You know, a person and people are different. Somebody has wealth, somebody has strength. Helping people to carry something, helping someone to even uh, to move from one place to the other, uh, whatever you know the needs are. And knowledge, maybe giving knowledge. Uh, this is with knowledge. Work. This is another level. Mm -hmm. There's the generosity with one's time, mm -hmm. generosity with one's knowledge. A person learning to teach others, mm -hmm. not learning for his own benefit and own glory, but rather to benefit others. Whether it's religious knowledge or something else, a person has a talent or uh, some uh, knowledge in anything that he would help others to do the same. The generosity with one's status, if a person reach a high status, he would be generous that he would help people with his status mm. and intercede for matters of goodness and so on. And of course, generosity with wealth. Oh. The generosity, even high level that many people don't think of it, mm -hmm. is with one's ird, as they mentioned, meaning with one's honor and dignity. Mm -hmm. Someone backbited uh, you, for example. Mm -hmm. Someone had slandered you, some bad things, whatever there is. Part of generosity is that you would forgive. SubhanAllah. That this is something also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was perfect in this. Uh, per well, someone in the status of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being in charge, mm. he can take people by justice and nobody is to blame him. But he would forgive Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Many people when they forgive, they forgive because they don't have any means to get their rights. Mm -hmm. But when they have the authority and forgive, this is what is more so virtue and must higher now. Very nice, Sheikh Ibrahim. So we would like to know, but after the break, inshaAllah, Sheikh Ibrahim, about zuhd or asceticism. Does that mean that we have to leave our wealth or, or if we are rich not to mm. maybe gain more money or not to gain money? Mm. So we'd like to know this, but sure. after the break, inshallah. So dear brothers and sisters, stay tuned. We're going to meet after Allah, Rasool Allah. Welcome back, dear brothers and sisters. We were talking with Sheikh Ibrahim about Zuhd and it's related to the signs of prophethood. So we'd like to know, Sheikh Ibrahim, about Zuhd. Some people, they understand like living a simple life that we don't seek wealth. And uh, maybe if I'm rich, I live in a tighter way or not in a, in a, in a very rich way. Is this correct? Uh, that's not necessarily correct because mm -hmm. a zuhd is a deed done by the heart. Mm. It's not a physical act. Mm -hmm. It's only in the heart. Mm -hmm. Of course, the signs of it is shown physically. Mm -hmm. So a person can be rich, has a lot of money, mm -hmm. but he is the best when it comes to matters of zuhd. Mm. And the meaning of the zuhd is that the person uh, leaves what is not going to benefit him in the hereafter. Mm -hmm. So the focus is the hereafter. Mm -hmm. And that's why anything, including wealth, a person has to make decisions and think of it. Is it going to benefit me in the hereafter? Mm -hmm. And wealth, definitely, is something that is uh, mentioned in the Quran, so many verses. Mm -hmm. Wealth can take the person to the highest level of Jannah. SubhanAllah. If a person would eat from or earn halal, permissible uh, means, and there are so many different ways that are impermissible. But he would leave all of that for the sake of Allah and he would earn from what is permissible. This is a good deed that a person would gain. The wealth itself when a person receives it mm -hmm. and he spends it for the sake of Allah, spend it for himself, for his family, for the needy and the poor, give the zakah money. And that's why people are in levels with this. Mm -hmm. The minimum obligation that a person, as long as if he has wealth, mm -hmm. he's not spending it in something that is haram, forbidden, and he's giving the right do on it, which is the zakah, for example. And then people can elevate themselves. Mm -hmm. And part of these levels of elevation is that really the wealth is used only mm. for matters that benefits in the hereafter. Mm -hmm. And this is actually something that is very enjoyable in this life. Mm -hmm. 
even when it comes when a person spends for his own self, mm. for his own family, he's doing that for the sake of Allah, for the establishment of the deen. Mm. How much wealth is among the, the Muslims today? And how much is this wealth is used mm -hmm. to make the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala superior, mm -hmm. to spread the truth. There's no messenger after the Prophet alayhi yes, salatu yes. And how can this message be spread? Mm -hmm. It needs money. Mm -hmm. It's mentioned in the Quran with the need of the money at the time of the Prophet sallam, and afterwards. And this is something till the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. uh, when a person has the concern to seek knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, you know, supporting this matters, to uh, elevate the ignorance from the Ummah of the Prophet sallam, <laughs> to uh, help the needy, those who are physically sick or so, and, you know, with matters of medicine and the like of this. Mm -hmm. uh, so many things and so many you know, avenues that, that a person can take. And all of that is being done by those who have money that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed his mercy upon. Mm -hmm. And when we look into the life of the Prophet mm -hmm. alayhi mm -hmm. the Prophet mm -hmm. so much wealth came to the Prophet mm -hmm. But he would give it all away. Mm -hmm. And when the Bedouin came to the Prophet mm -hmm. and he asked, mm -hmm. Prophet Sallallahu gave him, he asked, the Prophet Sallallahu gave him, till he gave him uh, goats and sheep that can fill the valley between two mountains. Oh. And the man went to his people and he said, embrace Islam. Mm -hmm. I came from a man that uh, doesn't fear poverty whatsoever. Mm -hmm. He does not fear poverty, mm -hmm. alayhi salatu wasalam, because yes. his heart is attached to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. If any other king or emperor or something like this, he would take everything for him. Of course. He and wouldn't and like... Uh, right. And he would live in a certain yeah. status and... At his time, والسلام, the kings in the east and the west, how they looked like and act and so on. And this something was not, you know, the Prophet وسلم, taught the companions عنهم, the same thing. And he said والسلام, that it is not something that makes me happy. The hadith starts with this, that it's not pleasing me that if I have money, uh, that I would spend three days if the money is مثل the mountain of Uhud, if wealth comes to me as much as the mountain of Uhud, gold or whatever, that I won't stay for three days unless I sp spread it all and distribute it all. Except that if I have a debt, I would pay the debt. Mm. This is the only reason why he would keep some money to pay the debt. <laughs> Other than that, there's nothing for him, uh, for himself. Uh, uh, the same thing after the Prophet, the, the wives of the Prophet, Aisha radiallahu anha. After the Prophet ﷺ and with the Futuhat and with many of the treasures of the world comes uh, to the Muslimin after ruling and so on. And how the leaders, how Abu Bakr lived his life, mm. how Umar would not eat more than one kind of food on the same table. Mm -hmm. Very rough and tough life. And when the money would come to Aisha, عنها, the wife of the Prophet ﷺ, she continued to live the same life that she lived with the Prophet ﷺ, and she would distribute everything that comes to her. It's her money. Mm. Mm -hmm. And she would distribute it all. And this, the famous incident when she was fasting, anha, and money came to her and she distributed it all. And at the time of Maghrib, her servant told her that if you kept something, so because we don't have anything, food, we don't have food to break our fast she with. She forgot about herself. She forgot <laughs> about herself. She said, if you reminded me, mm -hmm. I would have kept something. So to that extent, you know, they would give for the sake of Allah, because they learned this from the Prophet. <laughs> so again, we can clearly say, the most generous among all of the human beings from the time of Adam alayhi salam till the day of judgment is the Prophet alayhi And this is the case, this is true mm -hmm. in every single beautiful characteristic that human beings would ever imagine. The best of all of them that reach the maximum and the perfect in it is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And this is recorded, it's saved. Mm -hmm. And that's why the, the, the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi which is a wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the evil people, uh, their, their goal is to undermine the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and it's not really about authenticity, mm. it's about disbelief, <laughs> is to take people outside the fold of Islam. It's like the steps of shaitan. And that's why they would find a way like this because Muslims they talk about the Quran, the words of Allah. So instead they would go into through uh, the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, <laughs> That's why Muslims they should not be naive in this. A mm. Muslim is someone that is wise and intellect. And that's why it is not permissible to listen to these people. Mm. Because this is the ways of shaitan. And we are afflicted by this. When you see this is all over the Muslim world, then you know that this is an industry. This is not just sporadic things here or there. And it's all foolishness. Mm -hmm. It is not opposed with matters of, if, if, it's, a, if it's a matter of science and intellectual, uh, these people would not even have a, a word to say. Because it's just words that a person, anybody can say anything. Mm -hmm. And you would find some followers and people would believe him. SubhanAllah. A very important point you said, Sheikh Ibrahim, about generosity towards family. 
because so many people they misunderstand that in order to be generous in Islam that you have to give to the poor and needy but part of it is actually spending on your kids and your wife and if you're working and making effort that's actually I think there's a hadith that somebody was powerful and energetic and doing work and the companions told the Prophet وسلم, what if this power is used like in sabi- fi sabidillah for the sake of Allah so Prophet Muhammad said this is for the sake of Allah yeah. if he's doing this for his like maybe needy father and mother doing this for his family and so on he is doing this for the sake of Allah so we would like to no. clarify that this is true and this is the same thing with the Prophet mm-hmm. he said that the best of charity mm-hmm is what a person gives to his family, even the morsel of food that mm. a man would put in the mouth of his wife. This is a charity and this is an obligatory spending. Mm. That's why the most rewardable charity uh, is the spending on one's family. Mm-hmm. Why? Because this is an obligation mm-hmm. and it's done with honor and dignity and goodness and so on. Mm-hmm. This is part of the deen. But at the same time, uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, amanu, azwajikum wa uladikum lakum mm-hmm. that among your wives and your children, some of them are enemies to you. Mm-hmm. And you forgive and you pardon and so on. Mm-hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiver. Mm-hmm. Meaning that some people, their wives and children, might be really an enemy uh, to them by trying to make them commit sins and, mm. and be busy in forgetfulness away from the deen of Allah and to neglect their obligations. This is very obvious to understand. But also the wife and the children might be the most pious and righteous and they, <coughs> they don't have any uh, things of that nature, evil. But the husband, for example, the one that spend on the family, he is so much occupied mm. that he wants to spend so much on his family that would make him neglect his obligations, oh. earn from haram mm-hmm. so that he can feed, this is his excuse. Mm-hmm. And they become an enemy to him and they will be saved and he will be ruining himself as a result of this. So this balance is there. Mm-hmm. And that's why when we say uh, for us to work and to seek provisions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a duty and this is a, an act of worship. This is a rewardable thing. And with the intention that a person wants to protect himself and others. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, not to be extreme in these matters in which we would neglect other rights in our life that a person would neglect his salah mm. and he would take the excuse that I'm busy working for example no this is an obligation and this is an mm. obligation and they should not contradict one another and when the sahaba radiallahu anhu this is from the also the evidence of the prophethood of the prophet وسلم, when the verses of the Quran were brought down with ordering them to give charity for the sake of Allah some of them they were poor mm. and as Abdullah ibn Mas'ud he said when these verses of as charity were revealed, we would go out and carry things for people. He would go out to work. For what reason? So that you would give charity. Mm. This is a concept that you would find many places in the world. The poor, uh, they want to stay poor uh, as long as they're getting benefit and so on. No, but someone to have this concept of the poor person, whenever, whenever the encouragement comes to give charity, usually the poor would say, that's not for me. This is not addressing myself because this is I'm, I'm a poor person. This is for the rich people. The Sahaba radiallahu they didn't see it this way. Mm-hmm. They saw these verses as for themselves, whether it's poor or rich. So what did they do? They would go work to give charity. So this is a beautiful meaning that many people are not aware of. Mm-hmm. And this is all from the Prophet Ali <laughs> Very beautiful, Sheikh Ibrahim. Very happy thank to you. meet you. And inshallah, inshallah, next time we're going to talk about other topics. Salam. Thank you so much. And thank you, dear brothers and sisters. We hope... That we meet you next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.